appreciate it. Mm. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, well, tell so, me, that's exciting. So, so where are you? Where are you at with? I mean, what do you do for a living right now? Is, so, since I've actually been an independent uh, 3D print shop, basically, since about 2013, um, I got my uh, first 3D printer in 2011. Prior to that, I was a, a data engineer, um, uh, data science, doing uh, um, that, that sort of thing. Um, in 2013 is when I moved to and took the plunge, to, um, went fully uh, independent. Um, we started as uh, kind of like a print, print um, mail order print service. Uh, we did some of our own manufacturing. Um, we did uh, some custom design services, uh, and then yeah. So like we also manufactured some brown goods, some simple accessories, and type all open source goods that we've manufactured on the three D printers. Um, nice. Three D printing is definitely what uh, open source is what really drew me to that technology. Nice. Um, coming from the open source software world, starting to see the blurring between software and hardware, you know, starting to break down. That's what really drew me can, there. So can you send me a link to your work, your company, or? Uh, yeah, sure. So I'll, let me send you my. Um, ah, I don't know how to use this this job too well. Um, Chris, what's your last name? Yeah. Uh, Caswell, uh, C-A-S-W-E-L-L. -L. 3D Central is is our business. Um, so we don't have a, a a really big web presence right now. We were uh, previously so we went through a couple of different sort of iterations from working in our, you know, out of our home, we opened then a retail, sort of a retail store, selling 3D printers and doing trainings and workshops and things. Um, and these days we don't really sell printers anymore, even though that is still technically one of our, uh, we maintain the relationships with the printer, some of the printer manufacturers for, well, mostly for our existing clients, the schools and businesses that, that, that bought printers to us back in the day. Uh, these days we're much more of like a custom fabrication, product prototyping, trade show model, uh, custom, um, prototyping uh, and uh, custom fabrication type stuff. So mm. a lot of stuff that we do end up being um, under one NDA or another as, as, as well. So we uh, don't aren't able to publicize a lot of our work, but we have always had, a, you know, a, if we can publish the work the, for hire the, um, yeah, that yeah. we do, if we can publish the source, we'll give a discount on prototyping. Um, Is it 3dcentralva.com? Yes, that's correct, yeah. The website is a little bit out of date in terms of our, um, but still shows, uh, I, we still maintain like a, a full service 3D print shop uh, uh, repertoire of, of services, products and services. People come to us to either get something, um, get something printed, either manufactured, designed, prototyped, um, yeah, that sort of thing. It's gone from all different types of industries. We've touched uh, all different types of people from, uh, uh, art, you know, medical architects, mu uh, museums. We even did a, a third job for the Smithsonian recently. Um, to a science fair projects and uh, you know everything else in the community. It's about a hundred mile square radius that people come to us from all over to get either to learn how to print, to learn how to you know get something printed, or yeah. Are you doing it full time? time? Yes. Yes. How many people do you have? Uh, it's me and my brother right, right now. Um, we've had a, a staff of uh, three or four people at a prior, prior uh, configuration, but now it's uh, two of us and and uh, an inter. Um, Whenever we're able to, we have maintain uh, uh, relationships with some inter with some uh, universities around here, and so some of the arts department and the engineering department will send us some interns every now and again when we have time for it. For uh -huh. You able to make a living on this, or are you struggling, or doing well? Um, yeah, well, I mean, uh, we're doing well. I mean, it's uh, being independent is always a, a struggle. Having uh, having to also learn not only all the constant tech tech of everything, but uh, the business, having to learn the business and, and navigating all the different government, you know, uh, regulations and having to navigate uh, just payroll, all of that, all of that stuff, ha you know, uh, uh, has always been an extra challenge, but um, we are strong and, and, and moving forward, getting stronger every day. A nice family business. Right. Yeah, so, so tell me about, um, do a lot, did a lot of people make the headphones that you published? Um, that's a good question. I, based on uh, the headphone store is, is, is too a little, little bit interesting because um, we have a couple of different, we have two different variants of the headphones actually. And um, I would say based on what I've been able to see on the internet, at least a few dozen people made, made the headphones. Um, the, 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 those standard headphones. We said we would sell the vitamin kit for people uh, in addition to, I would just watch people to make uh, make them. But those headphones uh, that we published, that we were able to publish as open source hardware, was not the original. Um, well, 
we initially did, uh, it, that was a product prototype that we built for someone who was seeking a patent, um, a, a set of headphones, but they weren't the, a standard 3D printed headphones. They were seeking a patent on some specialty type of uh, a headphone for people with single-sided hearing loss. So it was uh, originally a, we did a, a, a Kickstarter a design service we did for, for them. Um, and then it was later that I was uh, I, I, um, got them to agree to let, let me publish the, the headphones um, that we made for that as an open source uh, design. Uh, yeah, but as um, yeah, I mean, he ha has has still taken uh, his the unilateral hearing loss style headphone is still patent patent seeking. Um, uh, but uh, that's why we we, we um, focus then then just on the, on the dual headphones uh, for uh, for for what we're documenting of, of that design. Yeah, pretty cool. yeah. Um, but so that was definitely the most complex of our open source hardware or of our. Um, Printable, fully printable design. That um, a lot of the other stuff that we have, you know, that we have uh, published a couple of hundred other things on on, the, on Thingiverse and those types of websites, um, and, and and shared those sorts of designs as well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you have like is uh, Thingiverse the place to get the the blueprints for how to make them? Oh, for the headphones, yes, yes. Yeah. Is that all documented, like with all the electronics parts and all that? You got that all there? Yes. Or, um, trying to find it. Thingiverse, the EQ, EQ one, uh, yeah, the EQ. Um, the Thingiverse is, uh, search is awful, and Thingiverse itself is pretty, pretty awful, unfortunately. Okay, like word source code. So they were written in, in Open SCAD. Um, the headphones were. Mm -hmm. So there will be both both the, the executable SDLs um, as well as the uh, as the open scan. We had, we did a YouTube video as well for for soldering. Oh, uh, how? But like you just list like speaker drivers times two, foam ear pads, like jacks, speakers. Um, what are the specifics? That? I'm not seeing the links to that. Where are those links? In order to the links for which, like the actual electronic parts, like the speakers and stuff, um, wire, cable, speaker jack, meaning this, but yeah, speaker drivers. drivers. There should be a a, a, a a link to the. Let me see. It might be on the on the original because I I we I remixed this uh, a couple of times. So um, so in terms of where the if I want to build these and get the right parts. Uh, yeah, give me one second. This came from here. Yeah. Ah, here we are. Uh, it's 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 a, it's posted actually in the original. If you have to go up uh, up a step uh, to the original dually as opposed to this one uh, that you might have found was for the uh, adjustable headband. Uh, Can you paste it? Can you paste it in the chat box? Though? Yeah. Yeah. You're in Virginia. Yes, we are. We are in Richmond. Do you know Lottie from I Made Three D? Ah, uh, from I Made Three D. Uh, it sounds familiar. Why? How do you spell that? L A D I. No, he's there. No. Yeah, that's another company. They do like educational printers, but they're not really open source. They're fake open source. Ah. Uh, uh, NC. Oh, here we are. Uh, sorry, I was just figuring out the show. They're in your area. They're around, uh, I guess, Virginia. Let me see. Okay. I made 3D. Okay, there we go. Oh, Jelly Box. Yes, I do know the Jelly Box the folks. Jelly Box, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. They they were so I mean for a couple of years when we were when we were trying to sell printers and do, do uh, trainings and all that uh, we were talking to them among other um, you know co uh, companies but it didn't. Um, did the open source get in the way, or for oh for me? No, for I mean, oh. how come it didn't work out? If, you don't uh, they, well, they were at their initial uh, when we were talking to them. They were um, they were trying to bundle the sale in with a build and a training, you know, kind of thing, and they were asking for for basically a lot of money for um, and not giving a lot of options like you had to, partic to participate in this type of thing and, and it just didn't really it didn't make a lot of sense with what else was going on I, I know that um, 
Um, Maria, Maria Suela, uh, from, uh, who is uh, a coordinator of the, at, up in Baltimore and at Enable, she still has a uh, uh, jelly box and I have uh, healthy repair. It's, it's, it's not a particularly good, a good machine. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we, I, I do so many, I, I, I do so many repairs and um, uh, services these, these days. I don't uh, sell printers, but I'll kind of give some advice you know, to people if they, if they have questions. Uh, but I do end up doing a lot of repairs, so I end up getting all different types of, of machines that people have bought, um, from the kits that they put together themselves to all the different, you know, manufactured printers. Yeah. yeah. So, so are you interested in running Steam Camps? You think that would be? I am. I am. This is, this is very interesting. Um, I would love to be involved, however, uh, however I can. Uh, we have a, a space here. It's two rooms and, and a kitchen, a couple bathrooms, maybe 400 square feet. Um, and, uh, That's with, your house. Uh, is that at your house? No, no. This is um, this is my shop, my uh, apart my apartment apartment as well. But um, okay. this is this is my, my shop. Yeah, a, nice. a workshop with, with tools and you know uh, we we have hosted classes here before. For the most part, I, I stopped doing big training. Uh, like uh, the, most of the classes that I'll do are one on one, one on two, one on three. Um, haven't done like a lot of really big ones, and certainly not anything multi day like that. Uh, we did. Intro 3D printing for you know everything from kindergartners up to college kids, but um, an intro CAD and that sort of thing. But I haven't done done anything quite that that, that ambitious before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have you taken a look at the curriculum, like the four days? Absolutely, yeah, and it's it's very very cool. So I'm assuming that we would be uh, uh, responsible for covering a lot of the 3D printing uh, stuff and filling in a lot of where we we feel that we could add um, to the 3D printing curriculum. Yeah, but we gotta develop some product first. Like we've got the universal access. Like we we still haven't. Like for example, on a three D printer, we have we've done the simple MK eight extruders. We want to do a simple one that's three D printable that people can make. Well, n not necessarily during the workshop, but a simple one. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, let's do so that. Like, uh, yeah, but we haven't done it, so we gotta do that, and we gotta put yeah. it on our axis and make it work. Gotcha. That'll be an awesome task if you can take it on. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me so uh, go over to that doctor. Here, why don't so you take a, look at, take a look at my screen. Can you, um, well, yeah. it should show up. I see. Okay, so I go to, assuming that you'd be interested. First of all, do you have any yeah. questions on how this stuff works? Like, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? And what the hell? Oh, no, the mission, I, I, I know I can get 100%. Um, Guide Open Source Ecology and, and what, what you're trying to do with uh, uh, um, Open Economy Workflow and, and, and that sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're on that? On that, yeah. <laughs> I watch, I, watch I, I lurk on the, uh, your updates, I don't know, every month, every couple months or something I, on, your, on the YouTube channel and uh, try and stay abreast as, as uh, my own workload and time allows, but yeah. Yep, that's pretty cool. Uh, which part of it, as far as running the Steam Camps, is, is compelling to you? Um, like, the, whole, the entire part of OSC, like, what's what's interesting about this whole package for you if you want to get involved? Um, I mean, everything from it being fun to know how to do things and learn a lot, or like learning new skills, to uh, it, fundamental change that's needed in, in how the economy is organized. Uh, how do you think that can happen? Say again? How do you think we can have a fundamental shift in the economy? Um, by ch uh, changing our approach to every, a lot of different things from um, supply from design to the supply chain to, to production, uh, uh, local production as it's needed. I mean, there's, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Local production as it's needed. Do you like the microfactory concept? Yes, yes. I, that was what we started as, as, a, as a case study for um, my, um, uh, um, can we make, try and make a, a, a little living with uh, uh, manufacturing open source goods on uh, replication, tech, on 3D printers, on, on digital fabrication. Can we, uh, you know, um, how can we, that was one of the first problems that we were trying to solve. It started as a, as a little Etsy that allowed us to leave Boston and, and land in Richmond to, uh, to, to try and do it full time. Uh, what do you... What do you see as the promise of that? Like, can you comment on where you see the open source community right now? Like, where are we in that whole package? Because uh, I think definitely there's, it hasn't happened, but what, what are your mm. thoughts on that? 
I mean, I, I say that well, I would say we're still definitely pretty uh, technologically. I think that we could, are quite close. Uh, so sociologically, I think that we are still quite far um, for, for a variety of reasons, including uh, people don't. It's just it's not even part of the public consciousness. Um, the amount of w uh, waste and drag and uh, Detraction on, on, on all of our lives, the um, intellectual pro property regime. Uh, I think it's something that's totally not. Um, um, uh, it's just it's a blind spot. Um, people have no idea. There's there's just not a there's not a conversation going yet. Um, things like competitive waste and um, just every uh, it, it's something that touches on so many different aspects of our lives without people uh, realizing it. And I think. Awareness is definitely something that's 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 holding it back, um, and it's just uh, much more so than, than technology. Yeah, yeah, you can say that again. Um, do you see the vision of like, um, yeah, like I mean, for us, it's we're kind of disappointed that after all these years, like so little of useful design has happened. I mean, do you feel yeah. that too? Yeah. Like I, I look at your headphones. That's that's actually cool. That's a real product, but it's like there's so few. So few things of that nature that, that have any impact, but we'd like to do them. I don't, I don't know if you read into that, but the open source everything store. So yes. everyone's doing open products and we're changing the world. I mean, okay, that's it. 80% of the, the goods on Amazon we can do in our micro factories. Yes. You're talking about making this into a, into a, a distributed store. Um, yeah. I, I haven't read that yet. That's, that's excellent. Yeah, the idea that, that part of the outcomes of the Steam Camp is we are every steam camp pushes the uh, some kind of a product forward so that um at the end of the day sorry let me just share that yeah the idea is um basically a, a funded open source product development pipeline we're saying okay we, we get the registrants to pay for our development we teach them they get involved as developers uh we we advance every product during a Steam Camp till they're all like commercial grade, really high quality and stuff that we can make a living. And basically do the, the concept of distributed market substitution. Take any common object mm -hmm. and we're saying, okay, we're just going to produce that in a distributed way. So next yeah. year, 2020, September, uh, September 1st, 2020, we're going to launch a Hero X challenge on the first open source 3D printed cordless drill that's professional grade. So awesome. we'd like to get to that. Awesome. 250k prize you should enter it maybe you'll win it you'll win it man. yeah <laughs> no but it, every everybody collaborates the the rules are such that everybody collaborates like you have yeah. to upload immediately and because none of those challenges on that website they're all competitive they're like you're not allowed to copy from anybody they're all just working yeah. in their own corners so we're going to do it mm -hmm. totally com collaborative and uh, the goal is to spawn a bunch of small enterprises doing that so we're going to work on distri the distribution and sales of that during the, the contest too so awesome. we can put this into into big box stores we're going to look at see if any of the big box stores want to play with us but mm -hmm. by distributed production so each 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 one of us looks like we could easily make like i don't know 30 100 drills using simple digital fabrication <clears throat> That's but awesome. you got to do the distributed quality control and all of that. So that's part yeah. of what we're developing here is doing that, yeah. which means degeneracy, meaning you got to really refine the production equipment. And we're going to do that from trash so that we're building in the filament recycling into this, this process. Good. Good. I was going to do that. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Have you ever done any uh, filament making? A little bit. And then I'm talking right now. I mean, I, I, I'm half drawn with Illustrator. I mean, I will say I have gotten 10 feet of usable filament. Yeah. Uh, is, is the extent which I, I, I've gotten. Um, we are supposed to be getting a, a shipment of uh, pre consumer waste to try and do an experiment with. Um, also, with the, the Enable folks uh, who have a couple of 3D Brooklyn is another uh, a group uh, who's a, a print shop kind of in Brooklyn who's was going to be sending, uh, who's going to be involved in this project. I don't know if that's, that's still uh, coming up, but it's definitely been a huge interest, obviously. Um, yeah, and. Uh, both getting, being able to get uh, reliable flows of uh, plastic for, for uh, printers and also for, uh, we've been doing more, uh, a little bit more vacuum forming um, uh, uh, lately too in prototyping and it would be really useful to be able to make uh, uh, recycle that as well. But, uh, wow. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, did um, you ever run yeah. into this German project like Verbewunder? Like they got the they got the best. Let me link this to you. Verbewunder. Um, YouTube. These guys are the best guys I know of doing open source recyclers, uh, 3D mm. uh, film and makers. Oh, they I know. Oh, awesome. I'll check. I, 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 there's all, we're also waiting on a shipment from a cool group in uh, Jakarta. Is that in Indonesia, I want to say. I, I want to say who's affiliated themselves with Precious Plastics, and they've been um, they're the first of they're there, so they've been uh, actually offering it as what they what they send me is uh, uh, so a couple of young people in, in I, I want to say. Yeah, uh, who who are going out um, and having keep uh, anyone who's collecting uh, water bottle caps basically and uh, the, um, from the, the beaches and stuff, and they're shipping them back down to the polypropylene filament. Uh, they're sending us a sample. Um, we're going to try and get some company that sells filament to try and sell some of their filament. Um, but uh, mm -hmm. but but that's that's, that's our uh, interactive experience with with eco plastics and, and and that sort of thing. Uh, definitely on the list. Tell me about Enable. Yeah. So Enable, um, are you familiar with the, with the Enable, um, uh, the, the printed prosthetics uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. group? So, I mean, they have, have been through their own sort of... Uh, uh, oh, that's Enable Build a Hand, right? Yes, 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 yes. Um, and uh, so, I mean, it was very much like a, a, a distributed, obviously, uh, uh, charity uh, group. That definitely ran into lots of different issues. Trying to build something, a really complex product that's really, really high spec needs, um, a medical device basically um, at no cost for only people of who volunteer. Uh, so it was a really big challenge. Um, we've uh, volunteered every now and again with them. I, I remember how we got hooked up with them originally, but um, we'd do a build every every now and again when, when we could and sort of advise trying to figure out. Um, well, a, I was trying to push them towards open source because what they ended up doing was they had ended up having 15 different arm uh, prosthetic projects, all trying to solve some trying to solve same, some trying to solve different problems, but most of them owned by universities that then copyrighted and and oh, sort of right. uh, uh, while guarding around it, and then the people from that university moved on, and so the project was totally abandoned, and so it's just sitting there in uh, kind of limbo. So um, it's a great example of competitive waste. Yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah, and especially like competing to be the most general. You know, uh, I, I want to be the one who made the thing for that for the children that have hands. Yeah, 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 it was it was very it was I was yeah, that's been a challenge. I think they've mostly converted everything over to yeah. of course licenses. They still um, are struggling with quality control kind of issues. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you know what? The funny yeah. thing is, they're all they're all competing. I know. Who can suck the most? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's just, uh, that's not going to get anyone anywhere very fast. So. Let's compete to suck. <laughs> yeah, first one to the bottom. It's a like race, race. It's, 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 yeah, it's a race to the bottom. As, wow. Uh, you know, how would you rate yourself on open source from 1 to 10? Uh, how, uh, say how would you rate yourself your, in terms of your own culture, in terms of open source from 1 to 10? In terms of my cultural practice or in terms of my cultural... Uh, your open source culture. Uh, how much you endorse it? Ideology, I'd say, is is, is pretty ten. Um, ten, ten or eleven? Uh, say again. Ten or eleven? Ten or eleven, something. I mean, if, I mean, not, not as a as a in, indicator means anything, but it definitely has been. I uh, do the annual pilgrimage to the Open Harbor Summit. Um, I am since twenty twelve. You going this year? They're not having one this year. I don't think. Really? Oh, interesting. It was going to be in, it was going to be in Shenzhen, uh, oh. and and then um, at the beginning of this year they, they decided they they said that they were going to have to because of issues with some, uh, something with permits and and stuff uh, to bring a large group like that into mainland China. You have to uh, they had there's going to be lots of hoops to register and I don't know the full mm -hmm. drama of it. But they ended up not uh, host having one this year and instead looking for. People to have local ones um, in uh, this year. So yeah, I don't know. okay. Um, do, would you consider yourself very entrepreneurial? Yes, I would. Is that would that be an attraction to working with a team here? Definitely. Okay, so let's yes. let's Especially save the world, man. Say again. Let's save the world, man. This is great. Yeah, I'm into it. Uh, 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 yeah, I'm I'm super into it. This would be uh, so. Uh, 
we would be responsible for part of the if it's in our city or in our region yeah. part of the so so we we venue like i don't know if your venue can house like 12 or 24 people but the idea there is we do 50 50 revenue share and uh -huh. we do the thing where all our stuff is, is goes to all our resources go to developing this method so we can develop a fully open source product development pipeline where um, the the effort goes to creating that building the organizational infrastructure to to make that happen and to help it grow <clears throat> so this this could be a thing to change the economy from competitive to collaborative so we're looking at uh, essentially yeah tr next major paradigm shift in the human economy so that's <laughs> pretty cool that's all that's all yeah um, that's it that, yeah but i think i see that you're on the same page i think I, i'm liking what you said so yeah. um let's let's do a couple of things so one let's go over who else we can get on a team because huh? so far man it's been amazing i I've, I've contacted about 90 people uh -huh. i went through the entire oshawa directory of registered uh -huh. project very few people are kind of coming out which is interesting I, I thought this would be like holy cow this is the greatest thing but we need more people so i don't know about that the open, the open harbor uh, certification and registration process was very interesting and uh, like i was obviously super behind it and then excited about it uh, personally i felt it was disappointed that i was not able to get more together to get onto as registered open harbor project products um and i don't know if other people all uh i was happy to see some um, manufacturers put their uh, like Lulzbot listed a whole bunch of things. Uh, yeah. I see some companies, some companies really not, and I just I was uh, also a little bit disappointed. That some of them that did put their stuff up there. That that a lot didn't or didn't didn't um, really continue. I mean, I feel like Lulzbot still is publishing uh, uh, their their stuff, and other, some other companies are. You're saying that some of the people there just uh, went south. They pulled a MakerBot. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know about <laughs> well, that far, uh, uh, but quite possibly, I would say that that they just something seems to be le less maintained, uh, and not as much as um, pulled or something. Just like le less lost some interest in, which which um, was a bummer to to see. You're saying that the world itself has lost interest in the directory, or no? I I mean just. Uh, I, I, haven't, I didn't see as much activity in it. I would be expecting it, it, it to grow much more more than it did, did you know? Yeah. Uh, I was also hoping to see much more. I understand, too, that the Open Harbor community got a little bit burnt from, from 3D printing for a, a little bit. Uh, you know, in, in the beginning, I was disappointed that there haven't been as many uh, project products, projects built around around 3D printing, you know? Um, like stuff that works, right? Yeah. Works. Like, like a really into the marketplace you know that is you know it, it could be as simple as, yeah. as a, wallet, a good wallet that you can write you know or something like that uh, and uh yeah so th that, that i guess was also also my I, i'm hanging that as much on my own shoulders as i am anyone else because I don't, you know it's uh it's you know, it's difficult documentation is always expensive but um and getting it all out there and coordinating with people is difficult uh i, I feel like the open source movement is, is definitely it's so much more stronger than than I think. It's so much stronger than I think it might seem ever, even um, on the outsider and the insider, or anything, because uh, how strong people's connections are to the community and the, what they're trying to do. And um, I think there's definitely a, a lot of power. It's just not as visible. Yeah. 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 Um, I share that. With you. Uh -huh. So, who do you think else I should reach out to 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 invite to present at the camp? That's a good question. You think 3D Brooklyn is good? Um, I don't know. I don't. I only know them indirectly now through through Maria. I haven't met them yet. Um, actually, what about uh, the, the Indonesian people are they good? They um have been quite nice over email, but I've been. Uh, we're still waiting on on our sample to come from them. Um, that's definitely an option. Uh, are, there they, was, there was, are they pub? By the way, those Indonesians are they publishing their film and maker work? That I don't know. Um, they were they were were talking about uh, they were talking about sharing sharing it openly with me when I was just talking about wanting to do this work with 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 Enable. So they, they did not seem um, 
Uh, I definitely got. I don't know. We'll have to. Uh, that's something we'll have to, to, to check in. I do know that uh, other other folks. Uh, the folks at Or Trend Solid uh, are, are Matt. Matt, there's another. There's a kid who ran. Uh, who started a three D print shop up in Delaware that I would court. I would you know we kick jobs to every now and again and talk. He, he's uh, uh, you know open source. Uh, yeah, that's more in, in a 3D printing. Are you looking for other people maybe in, in, in general or, or specifically to fill in some of these other uh, roles? Anyone who would be good for the STEAM camp, which where the curriculum is diverse. Gotcha. Both as participants and as uh, no, teachers. Right now, right now instructors. Exactly. The idea is that like all of us learn the entire curriculum. Do you think you could do that? Right. Yeah. You've got a lot of the skills in there already, right? I can do a bunch of 3D printing. I mean, I can do, I definitely, um, I mean, I know my way around a lot of electronics. I wouldn't say I'm ready to lead uh, all the, the, the electronics classes, but. Uh, do you have any power electronics experience controlling, like, say, DC with an Arduino? Um, experimental limited. I mean, I did some, uh, all, a lot of it is uh, offshoots of building, you know, a robot arm from a my stepper, you know, motor that came off of another, another printer. Yeah, it's about learning, man. So I, I think if, if yeah. you're open to learning, we'll teach. We teach each other. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, I just from all of the client work I've tried to do that involves very elaborate electronics. So I usually write enough time, and yeah, yeah, that, that's I'm trying to figure it out. So um, there's a lot of mechanical engineering that, uh, uh, these days. Uh, certainly anything with with uh, data or uh, economics or uh, computer science but do you have um <clears throat> do you have a mill do you have a mill that you use no we don't have a mill unfortunately mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've experimented in, in some circuit design but I uh, very much want to experiment with uh, mm -hmm. on the computer and uh, some simple simple prototyping um, analog electron prototyping that stuff mm -hmm. I'm do you use FreeCAD? Uh, I don't. I mean, I have I have downloaded and played with it before, but for the most part, actually, the CAD, um, my favorite hard modeling CAD is either, depending on what I'm trying to do, either OpenSCAD, uh, I like a lot, or um, Blender. Blender is a tremendously powerful tool. Uh, <laughs> nice. It needs to be, be reseeded, but in the past two weeks, I learned both that Clothing patterns can be designed in Blender, even with uh, the, the white graphite and the way that it falls, as well as uh, um, optical lenses can be designed using ray tracing uh, in order to to create to figure out the properties in order to build the right to build the lens. Um, Blender is a very powerful tool, but it's very complicated. Oh man, that brings up like 3D printed shoes. That's that's a billion mm -hmm. dollar market. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I mean, you can do parametric stuff in Blender. You can do Python scripting. You can do simulations. I mean, and there's, yeah, you can do everything. But I thought you were gonna say like Fusion 360. So I'm pleasantly surprised. Awesome. <laughs> nope. Okay. I uh, not not a fan. Um, Are you not a fan yeah. ide ideologically and practically? Yeah, both. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's both. It's both. Like no control. I, we deal so with so much with um, when we were doing prototyping, we'll have to fight with people because to get. The actual SCL file. People want to send us a, a, a SolidWorks file or a um, uh, Autodesk file. You know, sending us a file that, that basically says you can only up the, up the, you know, up, open this file if you have a seven thousand dollars software package this year and the um, yeah. Yeah. that makes some zero sense. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Just, uh, trapping the new students coming out through. Um, we got to fix that. We got to work on getting FreeCAD out there and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, FreeCAD, I'll definitely install and get if that's the collaborative uh, uh, CAD primary CAD, uh, CAD tool as long as it can take the STL spine and and, and mesh around and I'll I'll want to do it in that. Um, so uh, the printable extruder head is that that's something that would be a, a part of the curriculum? Uh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It would be great. So for the for the D three D simple, like on a first day, D three D simple. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, are you looking the at the curriculum? Yeah, so can you go to this here? Go to um, uh, go to this link here. Mm. Day one. Yeah. Okay, so that day uh, at two to six, we do a 3D printer build of a D3D simple universal access, universal con controller, and simple extruder. So the simple mm. extruder is like that or something that 
something that works. I mean, it could be anything. Yeah. Um, we, we need to just design the best, most robust thing. Now, eventually, okay, so do you know this? Do you know that there is no optimized rubber three millimeter extruder? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen one? I mean, to be honest, the three millimeter, um, the Taz, uh, well, the flex extruder was had its own issues. I got a couple of hundred and five hour prints out of it, um, but uh, for for the for TPU, but uh, it, it ended up clogging a lot as well. I mean, I haven't had um, for a really flexible uh, a filament. Getting like, three millimeter is the only thing that's worked for me. I've never been able to get one sent back to work, but. Yeah, as part of our, this is not now, but long term, is we're going to design uh, the optimized flexible extruder. Like, awesome. it doesn't exist. Like, yeah. it's not E3D, it's not, uh, no. no, no, no. So, yeah, we're going to, don't worry about it, we'll do that That's later, right. but yeah. Okay. Get um, we want to print, print our tractor tires for the tractors from TPU. Uh, awesome. Yeah, and tracks, so we're serious. Interesting. So an air, an air free, is it an air free design or with uh, an air, with air design? Yeah. No, we're talking okay. about from scratch, so from aluminum. Oh, wow. No, I mean simple stuff. Oh. Well, let me show you. Yeah. Let me show you. Um, yeah. Um, I've got a concept. I'll try to learn that one too. Uh, page on the wiki is called actually rubber extra I mean just link that in okay take a look at that that's the concept it's not threaded it's clamped interesting all there you see is clamped yeah, and yeah, yeah. Have, yeah therefore it can have scalable heater blocks you can put several of, of them on at the same time uh -huh. Uh -huh. But that's a rough concept i mean but basically you're just it's essentially doesn't have a neck and that distance there in a heat break like above the heat break is the shortest possible ever right so just right. So make it as thin as possible so it needs to be yeah and first of all e3 has a neck and that distance there that they go through it's a little long for me mm. we gotta like shrink that yeah. thing down probably like maybe like three eighths of an inch Mm. Between, oh, the, uh, yeah. between the entrance of the necklace design where the filament enters and where it enters the heat break that's like three eighths inch uh, but anyway that's that's yeah. later later uh okay oh. but tell me more tell me more uh where where who else who else yeah um i'm going to do some... who's that there so put it solid matt uh yeah it was founded by um matt uh Name I don't, I don't remember, but he uh, started around the same time as I did running a three a three D print shop basically that became more and more of a filament supplier. But did some of the he did um, the enclosures for the wall spot tabs, the, the, the laser cut acrylic enclosures with a uh, air filter. Um, he built those and then ended up doing some of the batch manufacturing for wall spot. They were they were sending to him to make some of their Gordon. Not, um, tools and stuff. Matt Gordon, Matt, Matt Gordon, yeah. Matt Gordon. Um, is. See, so he's, he's got a decent company. They acquired Ren Laser. Yeah. Oh, so Printed Solid is pretty big now. How many people they got? Yeah, he, 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 he divested from Printed Solid. He started Printed Solid, I think, with a friend of his who is now his friend is running. Uh, he's now running um, a uh, filament subscription pack kind of thing, I think. Mm. So we should reach out to him. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to um, see, see if he's interested. Not uh, in just terms of what where the biggest knowledge gaps. I'm, I'm scrolling through here where, where the biggest knowledge gaps for me would be. Um, yeah, the making of some circuits and things. I definitely could follow kind of along and help, but. Uh, do you see? Did you see the link for the circuit plotter? So basically, a, a plotting pen, but we have to refine that process so it's pretty replicable and gets us reliable results. But then we can make yeah. an Arduino Uno with that. Gotcha. Yeah. So we need a person for that. Um, gotcha. Yeah, that's actually the 
Circuit Plotter plus Arduino Uno project on the second day. Yes. Day three is we need a person for the electric motor. I've got a, let's see, the best on the electric motor so far is I'm talking to someone about that, yeah, but that we don't have a person that committed to that yet. <clears throat> um, I'll send an email out to everybody once, you know, with you. I think you're a great addition. But do you, how much time do you have? Do you have um, you have time to, to put into this? When do you think we oh. can run our first event? Run the first event? Um, Three months? Maybe. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, again, this is what this is what we do, um, and what you know, uh, this is what we like business stuff. This is what we do full time, and then this um, things like I mean, this is exactly what our mission, our, our mission statement is. So we'll uh, make uh, as soon as as quickly as we can get the other teachers together and, and figure out the other uh, the logistics. Yeah. Uh, what yeah? What, what whatever makes sense. Now this would be we'd, um, the second step would be finding. What people and what uh, like who the target um, uh, people would be, and, and trying to, to do that marketing and trying to figure out how much space that we can have, how many slots are we going to try and yeah, fill? So yeah. What I want to do is, uh, I want to, I want to see can handle. We'll handle like the logistics, marketing. So we'll mm -hmm. post the websites. All you need mm -hmm. to do is find the find the venue, develop curriculum, learn curriculum from others. Mm. We ship the kits to you and stuff like that. And um, so there's a. Let me send you another link, which is called um, Candidates. Have you? I don't know if I sent. I don't think I sent that to you yet. Um, this one. Mm. There's some more details about the preparation. Step number seven: preparation. Like we form the team, curriculum prep, kickoff meeting. We're gonna refine curriculum. What we need to do is once all the prototypes of the curriculum like are made, then I'll manufacture all that here, or we can collaborate on that, or whatever. Um, but I expect to be have OSC ship the kits to everybody, so that means I got to get my hands on them. Like if you're gonna do the extruder, you'd have to ship it over to me and stuff right, like right. that. Right, right. And have them ready to build. Um... Yeah, but just one, so that we can you know verify the quality control and product fit like the product ecology make sure it's part of the fits in the whole system uh, and then uh we go from there gotcha. yeah read through so this, would, that page there yeah yeah this is great so i would we would uh i'd be collaborating to to help um with the 3d printing curriculum and then yep. you would be trying to coordinate between what's between six and twelve um yep. 12, I'd say 12 or more, because because we, there's, okay, let's take a look at, uh, go into this document, you know, the Google Doc there, uh, on the curriculum page? On the curriculum Yeah, okay. go into the document, and you can edit it. Um, page three has the role breakdown. Gotcha. So, you don't have this. Uh, can you go into that document? I'm trying to find it on the, on the curriculum page. It's the embedded presentation. Ah. Edit. I see. Edit. I'm not seeing you yet in the doc. Uh, it's... I have many Google accounts, okay. I'll have to request access. It says request access? Mm-hmm. It says anyone with the... Oh, oh uh, I see, I see. It, okay. it, did load, it did load on my... Uh, it did load embedded in the... Uh, okay, in let the me process. change the... Anyone, it's public on the web, anyone can edit. I typically just open up documents, nobody messes with them. Okay, <laughs> get in there right now and, and see if you can get to the third page. Okay. Yep, yeah, loading, awesome. I still don't see you in. Mm, it's still loading, it's just going kind of slow. What speed internet connection do you have at your facility there? In, uh, we actually, there's a baseball stadium across the street, uh, or like down, down the road in the, um, so the, we share in a word baseball, basically. Um, yeah. So it depends on if, if the weather's good or if there's a ball game going on, but generally we get pretty good in it. Yeah. 
Uh, we have to find a venue that's got pretty good internet because uh, we're gonna during the event itself we can collaborate, like sharing the video feeds and also the, the project files and all that. So we want to uh -huh. have that. Well, just make that pretty good. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I would talk to the the guy ahead of time. We, I mean, we definitely could get, guarantee some pretty. It's pretty strong internet though, as long as it is not storming. Like I said, though, if we were going to do something here, it would have to be including the parking lot as well. Um, so depending on what, what do you yeah. say, 20, 24 people up to. Uh, yeah. So the hackerspace, the hackerspace down the street uh, is another option, yeah. and it's quite possible that someone in there would be interested or and able to uh, contribute to that to the curriculum too. Okay. Excellent. So I'm still not seeing you in the curriculum. Can you edit in there? Um, it's still loading. So I see go and no go. Assume camp candidates. No, nope. sorry, not that one. Not that one. Okay, so go to here. Take a look at my screen. I'm here. So the oh. document I'm talking about is this one. Steam camp candidates preparation. preparation. No, 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 wait. Product, where is that? Oh, yeah, that's a long page. Um, where is that thing? <laughs> it's a long page. Um, okay. Steam camp product ecology. Okay. Link number, <coughs> item number 12. So that document, you see it? Mm. Item 12 on the Steam Camp Candidates page. Gotcha. Steam Camp Product Ecology, yes. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Product Ecology. Okay, okay let's go edit in there. Okay, edit. You can do it. <laughs> Let's see. Can oh, you, yes, there you are. Okay, great. Um, great. Page three. So does the okay. does the ecology make sense to you on page one? We're doing a. It's, oh, look! I'm looking at your screen instead. Um, yeah. Quick interchange heads using universal controller, universal axis. Uh -huh. uh, then we do things. We'll make a cordless welder by taking the twelve battery packs that we make. So day three is. Day four is making battery packs. We stack them and make a controller for them and turn it into a welder. Stack 12 mm -hmm. of them together. So 12, 12 of them is like 200 amps. Uh, cordless mm -hmm. welder, which can be a product. Like the cordless welders cost like 3,000 bucks, so that could be a good product. Oh, wow. Um, but that's, that's the kind of stuff you mean, right? You're saying, hey, let's yeah. make some products that are open source, right? That we can. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. We make a battery charger from the circuits, 3D printed motor. That's going to be cool. I talked to the experts and yeah. they say that, yes, we can get a very highly efficient 3D printed motor, uh, except it won't be as power dense, but that's okay for the initial application. We'll work that out later. Um, okay, so that's kind of brushless motor. Okay, uh, page three. So we've got, we want to put your name somewhere here. So um, where are we going to put your name? So we're going to do the simple extruder. I'm going to put awesome. Chris. Awesome. What else do you think you can handle? Uh, ooh, 3D printed hacksaw. That's oh, yeah, that's just a simple thing. Yeah, but someone's got to do yeah, it, we in were, other words, to. We, we were talking about doing that like a couple of weeks ago. Oh, so we excellent. got a bunch of hacksaw blades. So. Yeah, yep. uh, basically a holder for a hacksaw blade, right? Yeah. Yep. There you go. Because uh, we're going to do that as our first print. So the first thing we print is not, not, not some Star Wars thing, but a useful tool. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yep. Um, cool. Yeah, can definitely do. Okay. Um, let's start on that. That'll be cool. Uh, simple extruder, three printed hacksaw. Anything else that comes up, or let's see, because someone's got to put that. That means uh, build instructions for that too, and um, maybe maybe take it from there. Let's see. How much uh, Arduino and programming do you have? Any... Uh, I know. I mean, I, I do a lot of programming, scripting, computer, computer uh, like I've done a lot of software engineering before, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, alt, Arduinoing has been experimental. I mean, once every 18 months, I'll pull the Arduino out and write a little sketch and experiment around with some on some project I'm trying to do. But um, I've never built any major applications uh, on, uh, on Arduino. Yeah, we're supposed to teach like basic 
uh, like LCD screen pro, like how you can make it display something. Because this LCD screen is very yeah. useful as a general device for output. Yeah. So we want yeah. to teach people, okay, uh, put messages on it, like modify our screen from 3D printing to CNC mill or whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, I imagine that's something I could figure out and. Uh, okay. And teach the basic hello world. I mean. What? Uh, so for a simple extruder, what would you suggest? In terms of what geometry and what how to do it? Have you built them from scratch before? Um, I have not designed a, a, a extruder head from scratch. I've built them for um, for some of the printers that I have. Do you think this would work here? Take a look at my screen. Something like um, this. It's, uh, it's just you're having connectivity issues. It's still it's grayed out right now. Hmm. Well, I got a hundred meg here. Well, it's probably mine. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Is this... So at the bottom of the curriculum page are all the links to all the stuff uh, we have? Yeah. We can build off something like this because we got some of the files for this already. Actually. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, look at that. We've got... Oh, no, we can start that unless you can find a simpler design. No, I can't see what you're seeing, unfortunately. Uh, here, let me paste it into the chat box. Did that work? Take a look at that link. Okay. We pretty much have it, but we have to integrate it with the current uh, extruder mount, with the mount like of the D3D simple. So, so the challenging part uh -huh. here is you have to basically connect this to our overall product ecology. Yeah, gotcha. So you need to go not only on a, a 3D printer, but it could go on just a tool head for a, like a hot glue gun, or it could go on any access well, kind of anything. Well, no, it's got a. That's a generalized case. Uh, you want to make you you need a design a interface for universal access, so it mm. fits specifically in our printer, and it's got a quick. The other requirement is it's got to have a quick connect wiring so that we can disconnect yeah. it quickly. So, yeah. so quick disconnect of wiring and the uh, mechanical has to be built into this because we want to do yeah. quick connect tool heads. Have you heard of uh, Snapmaker? Yeah. Snapmaker? Yeah. Google that. Uh -huh. Snapmaker. No, cool though. Uh, it's essentially what we're doing, except with our open source universal access. So it's a, th a thing that's got your interchangeable uh -huh. tool head. It can mill, yeah. it can 3D print, and can do other laser. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes uh, sense. Yes, this is a good. For ours. Yeah, that makes sense. This is a good sort of design. I would. I see already some things I might would do just slight, slightly differently, but. Um, okay. So basically, you're it. taking the universal axis. So I'm drawing this arrow here. Like that. Well, almost like that. Um. Let me take an arrow there. So universal axis, the simple extruder. Yeah, so universal axis has to fit the simple extruder and, other, and it has to be quick connect. So that's the requirements. Okay. And I'll re I'll go back with it. I'm gonna make another document where it's like, I will like specify all the requirements once all of us are just working on it. Because what we probably want to do is get a kickoff meeting. Like once we develop, oh, well, get any of the team members. Like for the kickoff meeting, we should have the conceptual design of everything that we're designing. Like just flesh that out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Feel free to feel free to end. Uh, you know, um, edit this doc or start a new one. Yeah. You can. Uh, okay. Obviously, you can edit in that, right? Yeah, you can find yeah. that. Yeah, um, I want to. I'll start uh, with uh, pulling the CAD down for the simple extruder and just yeah. printing some here and taking a look at how it all comes together, and then I'll uh, come with some uh, with some that's, ideas. That's it. That's what we want. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, back to the discussion of the people. So printed solid, Matt Gordon. Who else? Yeah, I want to. I want to get in touch with um, some of the folks over over at Hack RVA, the hackerspace down the street. It, I. Uh, they're really great folks, and I, I um, will have, have done some uh, um, collaboration uh, with some of them in the past. But most, for the most part, I've 
been focusing on the hacker space in my living room and then the shop here. So I haven't, I haven't been over there in a while. Um, I want to basically get over there and, and, and talk to them and see if some of those um, folks are, uh, are still active and some of the, uh, you know, how, how interested they, they might be. Um, yeah. on, on there, I'll give it some thought on more potential uh, folks. Now, would, would I um, be responsible? Would I need to find basically all of the um, teachers uh, in, no, no. in this? Teachers? teachers. No, oh, no, I mean, we're, that's my role. I'm going to bring everybody together, but I need your help too. Like, if you, if you can suggest anyone. Oh, totally. So, I mean, so like, would I be traveling to, to do some of the 3D printing stuff at some of these other places, or would. Uh, um, no, you're doing it in your place. We're going to all right. do it 12, 12 events, 12 yeah. cities worldwide at the same time. Yeah. And time. Gotcha. Awesome. You like well, that? I'll just my co coordinate on the 3D printing curriculum with some of the other 3D printers, perhaps. Well, we, we, that's going to be an extensive process. We're going to teach everybody inside out so we get a really good product. So we'll have a, several uh, meetings on that where gotcha, gotcha. we make sure. Cause, and then then we got to ship the kits to every, the full kits for the whole event. Like, depending on how many people sign up, we got to ship those kits like a couple of weeks before to everybody so everybody has the parts. I see. I see. Sorry. Um, the yeah. What do you think of the price structure? Have you seen that? Um. You may have not seen that. So let me. Uh, there's a document called. I want to. Sh it's all transparent economics here. At the bottom, there's a yeah. Steam Camp business plan. So take a look at the numbers. Um. I looked at the. Uh, look at that last link. Um, so the business plan, the numbers are downstairs there. Um, mm. If twelve people show up, oh, we, we get forty-six seventy-three. Twenty-four people show up, a sweet nine thousand nine hundred seventy-three dollars. Holy cow! That'd be pretty cool. Uh, That'd be the pretty price awesome. structure is about three hundred bucks for the kit for everybody. Okay. Um, the only financial requirements right now is as we're prototyping this. Uh, and we can refund you this, but but we're gonna need to ship you out a full kit of all the other people's stuff. So, uh, in preparation, so that you can run these, and and you can get a refund if you don't want to keep hold on to it. But all of us have to. The only financial responsibility at this point is we all gotta prototype every other person's stuff. Yeah. So that's the only financial requirement there. Um, and, gotcha. Uh, and so, uh, and what, what would be that? Uh, uh, what would be that, that commitment then? What would um, be getting uh, the stuff uh, to make other people's projects? Yeah, I mean, uh, the idea is it's de described in the preparation section. It's it's that after you succeed on your your print head, you'd ship that to me. I would evaluate it, quality control, see if there's any improvements, and mm. everybody ships their respective piece, like a small right. piece. And then yeah. we, then I would ship. We would produce all the kits here, and then we ship that out to everybody, so everybody gotcha. can study them for the event. Uh, and like a week or two before the event, we drop ship you the full kits for how many people you got, like twelve to twenty-four. Gotcha, gotcha. So that's, that's how it would work. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Yep. Okay, cool. So I have. Um, I think I have a, a, a pretty good idea, even though I'll, I definitely have some more more reading and uh, and research to do. I can't think of anyone right now in terms of who would be additional um, teachers. Uh, but let me uh, let me let me do some let me do some research and, and talk with some people and try. Yeah. And I'm gonna spend to today, like, cause yeah, I, I spend a lot of time uh, trying to get people. I, I I was hoping I get further than that. I'm not as far yet. So I need. We still need a bunch of people. That's fine. That means mm. it's harder. And it's like, I think we're just running into like, at the end of the day, very few people understand collaboration. That's what we're really struggling with. Like you're yeah. lucky to have you. Like you know, you you get it. But there's just so few people that are in a position to do that. So that's what that's the challenge right now. But we're gonna yeah. crack that. We're gonna change the world here. So this thing's gonna grow. We're gonna yeah. educate tons of people to be open source product development capable. And yeah. the idea behind the camps is that we educate potential collaborators, but it's more about building community. Like we're, this is our open source product development mastermind. Mm. Welcome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we do that. We teach each other and then we spread the word. But, um, and I think you can appreciate that 
it's about learning from each other. So we're going to be learning about technology. We're going to be learning mm -hmm. enterprise. We're going to learn mm -hmm. to be better people. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn to work on a team. We're going to conquer all our fears. And we're going to do this. <laughs> and we're going to build skills and all that. That's it, It's a lot. For me, it's like I want to do this because uh, a lot of it is about learning. Huge part. So, yeah. And especially the enterprise fund. we got to show that the people can be making a living with it. That is, that is the, I'm so glad that that is at the forefront of, of, of what you're currently talking about and, and doing it. There's the also the technical aspects and of solving other problems, but it has to be it has to be self-sufficient. We have to replace the rest of the economy. It can't just be, uh, you know, for what feels good. It has to actually work also yeah. and, and replace it, take yeah. its place. Yeah, so. that's that the word you're saying there is that's that's our distributed market substitution. We're going to take yeah. take every single product and common products like you're 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 saying that. Yeah, common products and that's it. Uh, it's I'm really mm. amazed that like nobody's talking about that like okay common products everyone's trying to invent something new but we've got the whole economy to clean yeah. up and make it yeah. cyclic yep do you Sorry see the connection finish. to environmental issues with what we do absolutely absolutely it's 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 it's, uh, it's directly the um it, it tied in with with, with climate change it, it's exactly uh, the problem of climate change is come coming is come from the uh inefficient uh, um methods of production and so the, the only the only solution i mean uh is to change the way that we we do that um and this is the only way that that, that i know of that that yeah. can, could be done um uh, chris are you telling really me are you telling, everyone, you, know? are you telling me that the current system of production is inefficient it it might be a little inefficient it might yeah i think i would uh, i would stand by that yeah uh, it is it is inefficient but how we you have to explain that to people why is it inefficient yeah. what are the inefficiencies in there there's competitive yeah, ways yeah. but i mean i think okay one is transportation yeah. it's true that a lot of, i think the biggest okay i think the answer there is the biggest inefficiency of the current system is that things have a very short lifetime they end up in a trash yeah. heap very, very quickly. Yeah. That yeah. is the main ecological thing. Because if we de can yeah. then create the circular lifetime economy open source, then yeah. you keep the life of those products alive forever. That's yeah. That's that. Because you can print. You know how many machines people bring in ten thousand dollar machines, and it's but would work except for one little piece of plastic that is is broken. And we try and do all this reverse engineering to try and figure out what the shape should be because uh, they didn't share any of their designs. And oh, for one thing, but also uh, it's um, not well documented. And most things, most of the time, when that happens on general consumer goods, it goes right into the trash. A vacuum cleaner or uh, yeah. uh, anything else is, is one small piece of plastic breaks, and or once you know some fault from other bad inefficiencies and like i said it goes straight into the trash so the lifespan of that um is so much smaller yep uh, yep. yep that's good that's that's i think one of the main like if someone asks us how well how are you open source ecology duh you're print, printing plastic well no it's about lifetime yeah. design that's one yeah. one aspect yeah. yeah okay cool yeah cool storage packaging i mean shipping that's all kinds of uh yeah no, it's you're right. and, you're right. it's, Yep. So this sounds good, man. This looks like you're in, man. Let's do it. Um, and it's it's pretty much self-selecting. Cause so if you if you do your part of the curriculum and you're willing to learn the other stuff, you're in. It's it's like select yourself in. That's the deal. Yeah. Excellent. Well, then, then that's uh, that's that's what I'll do. I mean, we um, this is what we want to do and do every day. So um, I. Uh, I have a pretty good idea of some, of some of what my next steps are, but I imagine we will want, um, there will be a, another meeting um, soon. To, yeah, to like email me to follow up in the meantime. I'm, I'm going to like email everybody so far that we got on a team to introduce everybody. I got to do okay. it in the next couple of days. And then uh, we'll continue the discussion. And we, we basically want to allocate, like in that graphic I showed you, just put names to yep. every single item. We got to fill that with names. So that's that's our goal. Gotcha. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Um, okay. That sounds good, man. So, Chris, awesome. um, my pleasure. This is great to meet you. I hope we... It's great meeting you too, Marcin. Yep. Okay. Take care. All right, take and care. Let me know if you got any questions. Communicate on email. Let's let's do it. Okay, I will. I will. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.